and take a look. Um, almost three-fourths of the way through now, we are doing a really good job, but we need to go ahead and take a look at the fighting of World War II. So grab your um, notes and let's take a look at from the middle of it right after Japanese internment, American fighting World War II. The one thing I always like to stress upon you guys is that World War II is so massive because it is not one war, it is two. Um, you have your dictatorships in Europe. You have Mussolini and Hitler. Stalin's on our side now, but still Stalin too is a dictator. Then on the, um, the other side, you have Japan, Hirohito, Tojo, militarism. That threatening of um, China, we send the flying tigers, that kind of stuff like that. But there is definitely two main areas we are going to be fighting this war. So if you want to go ahead and head out beside the sides, go ahead and put European war. Sometimes we call it a theater. You might want to notate that. European theater and also the Japanese or Pacific theater. So the first thing let's look at is I want to look at the Pacific theater. So remember, when I change to a slide, pause it, get it down, and then listen to me. So pause this, get it down. Okay. Now the first guy we need to highlight are stars. His name is Douglas MacArthur. This should sound familiar because he was actually the guy that Hoover sent in to do the bonus army dirty work. Douglas MacArthur is going to be your main man in the Pacific Theater, so please put a star by his name. He will be your in-charge guy in the Pacific Theater. He is going to be a commander in the Philippines. He is going to have a lot of very, very, very horrific things happen to him and his men. In fact, it got so bad in the Philippines towards the beginning of, the, um, of World War II that he was actually evacuated to Australia, and he actually had to leave men behind. Um, and so he vows that he will return to the Philippines, which he will. But that's just one person you need to know. Here's a picture of him, oftentimes seen with a little corn pipe there. Now the next guy that we have, this Douglas MacArthur is pretty much in charge of everything. But then the next guy we have is Chester Nimitz. He's in charge of, I want you to circle his name, put an arrow down to the Navy. He is the Fleet Admiral of the United States Navy. He is the Naval Authority in the Pacific. I always remember this because probably the most famous um, naval destroyer there is is the USS Nimitz. So kind of interesting to see there, but two very important people. Now pause this slide, get it down. Okay, let's talk about island hopping. Now the first thing we need to talk about with island hopping is it is literally a strategy. Out beside island hopping right here, and I'm going to be checking this when I check these notes in class, I want you to write strategy by island hopping. And then I want you to circle Douglas MacArthur's name right here. His idea is to bypass Japan's heavily defended islands. Go ahead and underline bypass heavily defended islands. Seize control of the easy, easily defeatable outposts. And then what he wants to do is basically island, what's it called? Island hop all the way to Japan. So with that, he wants to build landing strips on these new um, possessions, all this kind of stuff like that, in order to not only cut Japan's supply lines, but to increase our likelihood of getting there. Here is a map of the Pacific in World War II. Here's the original strike, Pearl Harbor. Now, one thing I want you to notice is what MacArthur is saying with island hopping is he says, let's go to here, to here, to here, to here. Then also, simultaneously, he comes down and Guadalcanal is going to be a pretty famous battle. If I could take so much time and tell you about all of these battles, I would. Coral Sea is going to be a big one. Um, you're going to have some of the bigger ones, and we're actually going to mention them by names in a second. Lay Take Off, my grandfather was in that battle. The Philippines, Manila Bay, all this kind of stuff like that. But you'll notice there's tons of islands leading up to the main island of Japan. But here's the deal. The United States does not have the ability to go straight from Pearl Harbor to Japan and back to Pearl Harbor again. And so what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to inch by inch by inch or island hop all the way to Japan. And every single time they get Leyte Golf, um, Guam, you know, Manila Bay, or when we start getting to the other ones, every time they get some of these islands, they now have island landing strips so they can take off and then hit Japan. It's a lot easier to go from Philippines, Manila Bay, any of these areas right here to Japan than it is all the way from Pearl Harbor back there. So that's something to think about. Now the other thing that we had on this slide that I kind of want to go into a little more details about is this right here, the Navajo Code Talkers. Now the, just the name Navajo right there gives it away. You're talking about American Indians. Um, they are Navajo Indians serving this country with bravery during World War II by providing their language as a code in the Pacific. This code is going to be highlight circle unbreakable. 
I cannot tell you how much the Navajo Indians lent this amazing gift to the American military. And many of them, you know, there are a lot of stories, but these Navajo code talkers, and here's a picture of them actually, the last one just died last year. Um, but these Navajo code talkers, you want to talk about one of the reasons we won in the Pacific? Them. They absolutely gave us the ability to have an unbreakable code. In fact, it would be at a, a battle that we're going to talk about in just a second, Midway, where we broke the Japanese code, but they never could break ours because it was in Navajo. Now, I'll pause this slide, get it down. Okay, this is another thing that's going to happen in the Pacific that you need to know. It's called the Bataan Death March. Make sure you highlight our star up here, Bataan Death March. It's actually the Battle of Bataan, but what we don't study is really the battle. We study what happened afterwards. This is going to happen after this Battle of Bataan. It is a forcible, forcible transfer of 55 miles by the Imperial Japanese Army of over 12,000 American prisoners after the Battle of Bataan in the Philippines during World War II. You want to know why Douglas MacArthur was pissed and said he would come back? Look at this picture right here. Those are American soldiers, and they basically look like, what pictures have we seen before? The concentration camps, right? The Japanese Imperial Navy marched our entire prisoners of war from the Battle of Bataan, and they marched them to death. Of the twelve to 13,000, only 7,000 survived this march. They were given no food, no water, no rights. No POWs in history have ever been treated this unbelievably, horrifyingly bad. And so the Bataan Death March actually becomes one of our central figures of anger um, in the Pacific War. You can see right here is a propaganda poster right here. And it says, what are you going to do about it? It says 5,200 Yank prisoners killed in Jap torture in the Philippines. And this is actually going to be a poster they would put in like a factory. It says, stay on the job until every murdering Jap is wiped out. You have this picture right here of a Japanese horrible monster taking and abusing our soldiers. Bataan Death March pretty important thing to understand and now you can understand why MacArthur vows he will be back. Oh here is actually this question was on last year's EOC. See if you can figure out the answer. Pretty easy when you know your stuff huh? It's obviously the last one. Now the Battle of Midway. Big big thing right here. Pause it. Get it down. Okay let's talk about the Battle of Midway. First thing I want you to do is circle Midway. This is so easy. Guess what this is? Out beside this, put an arrow midway. It's the turning point in the Pacific. It doesn't get any easier than that. Midway turning point. <laughs> Genius. It happens in 1942, June of 1942 to be exact. The Japanese had planned to destroy the rest of our naval fleet right after 1941, which was, of course, Pearl Harbor. But here's the deal. The U.S. code breakers broke the Japanese code because we have Japanese-Americans but they didn't have Navajo Japanese. So thank you again to them. So with that, this is going to be able to allow us to ambush because we broke their code. We know they're coming to Midway. It's the turning point. Oh, you didn't have to write it. It was right there. Turning point, circle this right there because it stopped the Japanese advance in the Pacific. I'm going to show you again this map again. I always want you to visualize the Pacific for me. Now with that, we are trying to island hop our way over. But one thing is if Japan goes to Midway and then Midway to Pearl Harbor and Pearl Harbor right over, oh, it can't go any further, but you have to imagine that California is on the other side of Pearl Harbor. If Japan gets to Midway to Pearl Harbor, they're already jumping over to the United States. We don't want that happening. We want to jump island hop over to them. So the Battle of Midway is unbelievably important because it allows us, and here's what I want you to write up beside the slide. Are you ready to write? You ready to write? It allows us to stop the Japanese advancement towards the mainland. It allows us to stop the Japanese advancement towards the mainland. Battle of Midway never would have happened. We never would have broke their code. Then they could have taken Pearl Harbor. From Pearl Harbor, a whole fleet's gone, and we've got a major issue. Now, the next two battles, Battle of Leyte Gulf and Battle of Okinawa, Iwo Jima and Okinawa, Oh my gosh, we are talking about some important battles. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to this map real quick and I want to show you where Lay Takeoff is. Remember, we're island hopping. We didn't talk about it, but Guadalcanal's down here, Coral Sea. We're starting to island hop closer. This is the Battle of Lay Takeoff in the Philippines. Are we clear with this one? Now, one thing I really want to make sure you guys understand, and this is probably a little self-serving, 
but I might ask you this question. The love, absolute love of my life when I was a little girl was my grandfather. Bapa was the best Bapa. I call them Bapa because actually my grandmother and grandfather went to Hawaii and um, my grandmother brought back a little shirt that said, if lost, return to Tutu. Tutu is it, a Hawaiian for grandmother. So we couldn't figure out what went with Tutu because there was no Hawaiian word we knew for grandfather. So we just thought Tutu and Bapa sounded good. So Bapa became Bapa. Um, Bapa was um, uh, basically just a, a low on first class on the USS Shaanxi. Um, and with that, Bapa was in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Um, it was when MacArthur, here's the historical stuff after I told you my story. MacArthur returned to the Philippines in the Battle of Leyte Takeoff like he promised them they would. It's in the fall of 1944, so we're talking about towards the end of the war. And it is the largest naval battle in history. Just as the Battle of Britain was the largest air battle in history, this is the largest naval battle in history. The Battle of Leyte Takeoff is when MacArthur takes back the Philippines and we now have a massive, take a look at this, a massive island chain at our disposal for us to fight the Japanese. Now the next one we're going to take a look at, there's going to be Iwo Jima and Okinawa. This is where I need you to circle napalm, napalm, circle that right there. Out beside napalm, I need you to put a little arrow. The technical definition of napalm, anybody know what it is? Anybody think they know? Huh? Jellied gasoline. And it was used on six industrial cities in Iwo Jima and Okinawa, which basically completely destroyed these industrial cities. And one thing I would ask is, why do you think they went after industrial cities? Yeah, the same reason why we put our women in the factories. Production wins wars. We take out their industry, they can't fight back. But I'm going to tell you, the whole reason we use napalm and the whole reason we bomb the crap out of Iwo Jima and Okinawa is because we wanted to take them out. We wanted to create an unconditional surrender. But guess what? The Japanese are crazy people. They never will surrender. And when we can't get them to surrender in Iwo Jima and Okinawa, okay, look at how close we're getting now. Iwo Jima, Okinawa right here. We can't get them to surrender. These turning point battles, lay take off Iwo Jima, Okinawa, are going to actually cost us thousands upon thousands of American lives and it's going to increase our death toll in the Pacific. I will tell you, we do basically win Iwo Jima and Okinawa, but it doesn't come without a cost. Basically, it does put us between, um, within 100 miles of the U.S. or the Japan mainland. So I'm going to tell you it's worth it, but it definitely goes down in history as a high cost. Ever seen this? Of course you have. If you've seen Flags of Our Fathers or if you're an American basically in general, you've probably seen this picture. This was the American victory in Iwo Jima. I got USMC in my classroom probably right now, right? Oorah, Semper Fi. This is your Marines. This is the most amazing photo possibly of the Pacific. It is the American victory at Iwo Jima. A lot of people have seen this picture, but they haven't seen this one. It's the picture that came after it. Just a little fun fact here. So Iwo Jima, Okinawa, pretty dang important. There is a memorial in Washington, D.C. I went ahead and took a picture of it for you guys because I'm telling you right now, if you don't get to see some of this stuff, you are depriving yourself. you got to see some of this stuff. So pretty interesting to see there. So if you are going to review this entire idea, let's go ahead and take a look at this slide just kind of as an overview, if you will. You have Hawaii right here. Pearl Harbor is the attack that starts it. Then you start island hopping from one to the other to the other. You have the Battle of Lay Takeoff. You need to know that one. Bapa was in that one. You have Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Those are my um, uh, taking and those are my napalm battles, trying to get closer to the mainland, if you will. Of course, you do have the victory at Midway. That's the one where we had broken their code, kind of helped us out. We are getting closer and closer and closer to the Pacific win. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a costly one. Of course, you guys, I bet, know how the Pacific War ends. What are these two little mushroom clouds there? We're going to have to nuke them. And that's unfortunate because it'll mar our basic standing as human rights advocates in the world. But still an interesting overview of the Pacific War. So your next one is going to be over the European theater. So I hope you're ready for it.